What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy Podcast. I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with his co host and co coach, KG, and I'm in the hizzy. And in the past, we did an episode called Habits of Super Fit People, but this is going to be a travel edition. We just came back from Vegas, so that is like the Mac daddy of hard to stay accountable, tough situations. No one would even dream of it to stay fit, stay accountable. But you know me and Kyle, you know we're out here putting in work, getting it done. And we get asked so often, how can I still see results when I travel? And we just saw a lot of different things being with such a big group, analyzing other people, analyzing our own specific situation. And as people who have traveled a lot in the last year, which has been absolutely awesome, we have some really high level tips for you because I know for a lot of people, they'll see progress, they'll go on a trip and they'll just do so much damage. They'll feel discouraged and they'll end up spinning their wheels and it just scares you to travel, to actually enjoy yourself, to get away. So we're gonna show you how you can have your cake and eat it too in this episode with our habits of super fit people travel edition. What's number one? Number one is just honestly say no quite often. And it's just a lot of times people think that others will judge them or just think like down to them or whatever. But like the truth is that I hate giving into something when I don't actually want it. And because especially for you, if you've been listening to this podcast, if you've been implementing everything, there's a high chance you've been building up all these great habits. You've been staying no to these specific moments and to whatever it is, saying yes to the right things, no to the wrong things. And like the truth is, if you want to do something, that's totally fine. Like that's completely different. Different. But I find that there's so many temptations that you just kind of give into that you just don't really care for. And I think it's so important to be able to evaluate that situation, to sit down with yourself for 15, 30 seconds, just be like, do I want to have this drink? Like, am I just doing it because it's ordered, because it's there, because someone else is doing it? Or is it something I actually want to do? Same with healthy meals or uh, I guess unhealthy meals. Like, am I going to go to this restaurant and just order whatever it is because everyone else is? Like, it's so important to be able to think for yourself. And even just from traveling with different people over the past few years, like some groups like super healthy, some groups not as healthy. Like I've just been able to stay the course and just do what I genuinely want to do, what makes me the happiest, what just like what I enjoy and stuff like that. And there's just no better feeling. And that's something I wanted to share is like, you really have to get used to saying no to a lot of people on your fitness journey and people move on from it. You know, someone offers you something, you say, no, I'm, I'm totally okay. And there's different ways to approach it. There's different phrases. Like even one of the best things you can say is honestly, I'm so stuffed if it's not something you want to do, but you shouldn't have to explain yourself to others, but say no, if it's not something you want to do. And, uh, that's just going to be number one. And one of my favorite ones for sure yeah and with this to like analyze why you're doing something and the example i want to get to i guess is at grocery stores a lot of time you could buy like let's say you want to buy a chocolate bar i like reese big cups i've said that before they're about 200 calories each they're pretty serious and i only go and buy one when i want one so i have to go there get it eat it i can have 200 400 calories depending if i eat one or two of them and that to me is a reasonable amount it's a fun treat 80 20 rule i'm able to work it in Grocery stores like to get you, they'll say unit per price, $2.99, but if you buy two of them, it's $2.49 each. And then you'd be like, oh, I should really save the money. Like I'm an idiot if I don't save the money. But if you have a higher level of thinking, be bigger than these promotions, you're gonna think, I'm gonna spend $2 more than I would have spent for one, and I'm gonna end up eating 800 calories of chocolate, especially if you don't have the willpower. Like that's why I specifically don't keep them in my house, I go buy one. So in those situations, it's better just to have that one thing. Another example is uh, spend minimum. So we were out at Top Golf and we had a 450 spend minimum for where we were seated. And it was interesting seeing everyone scurry to make sure they eat and drink everything in that 450 spend limit. And like, to me, I don't wanna just punish my body to say I got the most of something when I know it'll actually make me feel worse. So having that self-awareness and being able to say no in the situation, I'm not crazy about the top golf food, maybe I'm not ordering the right stuff, but I personally haven't been super into it. So I chose not to take advantage, but in those situations too, even if you're spend at 350 and they're still gonna bill you a hundred bucks, don't feel like you just need to start eating and drinking things just because if it makes you feel bad, if you don't want it. And it was funny, we got one of those things like you're, uh, you can get a, it's a beer thing on a golf ball or it's, I don't know, it's top golf thing, it's kind of cool. But one of our friends at the end was just sitting there chugging, <laughs> being crazy. And then of course, right after he goes, I do not feel well, why did I do that? And it's just kind of one of those things where you're like, oh, like that's where it's hard because especially if you've been someone who doesn't like to waste 
it's hard to have that higher level thinking, but when you're traveling too, or it's all inclusive, I need to take advantage, I need to order and eat everything. If you don't want it, just do what you wanna do. You'll feel better because of it, and you're actually gonna waste less because you're gonna feel less sick, you're gonna feel better with yourself, and sometimes it's better just to have that attitude. So that's an extra little psychological tip I wanted to give on, because I know especially if you've grown up with that attitude, like eating your full portions, and just learn to be more in control with it. I've spoken in the past how really successful people in those blue zones who live past 100, a common theme is they only eat till they're 80% full. This is something I've been doing. It's a huge adjustment for me because if there's a massive thing, and I distinctly remember the last time I had way too much dessert and I regretted it. We were in Dubai. We were at this really cool Mexican restaurant. Me and Kyle both ordered some weird churro donut. So it was something like that, but it was huge. I didn't even like it. I'm like, it I, I paid like a lot of money for it, like 40 bucks. And I'm like, I am eating this. And I, and I felt so crap after. I'm like, why did I do this? So instead lately, I've really grown since then and I'll, always just do that 80% and I'll cut myself off. And that tipping point, you think you want it, but we've said it before, the first three bites will taste the same as the next 80. So it's better you really enjoy what you want, be reasonable with it. And it's not selling yourself short by any means, actually doing the better thing because you don't feel sick, you're in control, you appreciate what you had, it makes you feel better to it than when you feel horrible just because you're taking advantage. So that's kind of my big little rant and that's something that was on my mind, my little addition to number one. But for number two, when traveling, the more you can stick to routine, the better off you will be. So for us, uh, we like to work out in the morning. We like to start the day with some coffee, doing some work on our computer as online fitness coaches. We always like to make sure we're getting to our clients, doing our programs, making sure everything's operating there, getting back to our amazing community. And this is how I start my day. This is my baseline. So this is something I really try to do when I travel. I'll find a Starbucks, try and get on a walk, get some sunlight. I'll keep those components of my daily routine that I have at home while I'm out there. And then that's a really nice soft warm up for me to go ahead, to be in a good spot, to be able to go get a workout done. I, we were traveling, we we're at Aria in Las Vegas, if you've ever been there, amazing hotel, it's crazy, it's like a full on resort essentially, probably is a resort. And this huge gym, it's sweet. It was super busy though, but we still got it done. We still got done what we could. Of course, maybe my routine was 50% of what it would be at home, but that's still 50% better than if I did nothing and just laid around. And I personally know I feel good doing that. I know some people when they're away, they really just like to be away and relax. And if you're that person, that's totally cool. That's fine, but try to keep those habits of relaxing with positive things as well. So like drinking lots of water, going on walks, sitting by the pool, that is totally fine. But if you do like your routine and you enjoy it, for me, it kind of brings that consistency to me when I'm away and it makes me enjoy places more when I am away. But what you'll notice with all of these tips is you really need to apply them where you feel best. Everyone is so different. Some people, when they're away, they want to live their life just like they did at home in that new area and that's where they feel best. Some people really like to let loose and there always is a more reasonable way of doing it for you and what you feel best with, but this is something you need to evaluate. And if you're someone who's not a big drinker, you can enjoy food a little bit more. If you're not a super big foodie, you could really just try and eat super healthy and enjoy maybe going out and partying a little bit more. Or if you're insanely active, you can say, I'm gonna double my activity and eat this good food, get tons of rest, rejuvenate myself, feel amazing. That's cool too, but there's where there's so many components to it, but doing these seven tips will just be so powerful. So I won't keep ranting. We'll go over to number three, unless you want to add to the sick and to the routine. I was just going to say that one of the biggest things why most people, I guess they just, I, I hear it a lot of like, Hey, it took me three weeks to get back into my routine and I'm struggling because of this. And like, even if you don't hit the gym, for example, but you still try to get some activity in around the same time, even Josh, I was like, Hey, what time are you getting up tomorrow? Like we were out pretty late. He's like, same time as usual. I'm like, man, that's, that's powerful. Like I was thinking the same thing, but like, you know, just then when we got back on Monday, it was just like, no problem. Gym, good food, waking up, you know, of course time changed a little bit challenging for some people, depending on where you're at. Um, but it was just like, easy, like haven't missed a beat this entire week. And it's because we maintain those, you know, still had an incredible time, but still maintain those habits. Even I woke up, it was Saturday morning. I, you know, it was a little bit, um, went to bed a bit earlier and I just went down to do my client check-ins around 5 30 AM and get ahead of my schedule. So that way I can go enjoy it with some buddies for the rest of the day. But like, it just felt so good to be on that routine. Like I'm a very routine oriented person, but number three is just like avoiding having the screw mentality. So even the one day I did have a little bit more calories on that first day, 
but it's so easy for a lot of people to just like look at a situation where like, oh, well, my workout was only 50% and, you know, maybe I uh, had a slightly more calories, whatever, who cares? Nothing else matters. And I'm such a believer in just like not beating yourself up and having that like screw it mentality. Like we all know, and we can all think back to a few times in our journey in our life where we've just kind of had that mindset of just like, eh, whatever, nothing matters. Like let loose and just screw it essentially, right? So I really recommend not having that mindset. Like I'm always aware, like it's so amazing to have an incredible time, but at the same time, just like be aware and just like taking care of yourself. And that's really wanted, what I wanted to share is just avoid having that that screw mentality. Like, you know, just you see these people who just do not care at all. It's like, nope, I'm going all out and you just feel horrible after. Like once again, we've all been there. I know you all have. Just wanted to share that with you and that's something that um, I was thinking about as for Number three. Number four is to think ahead with food. Preparation is key. As we always say, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And with travel, this is bigger than ever because travel, you're doing all these fun things. You're in these crazy areas and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm so hungry. What am I going to do? Or I'm at the specific place where I haven't had anything. A good example of this is we went to UFC. We were watching the event, our first UFC event. It was so awesome. We were there for 290. It was so much fun. And I knew and I told everyone we needed to get there for five to watch the early prelims. And I was saying it's a little bit early, but we should really eat our dinner. And I was really big on this at like three, like be out there, get something in us and just be prepared to have less food later because at the arena, there's not going to be many options. And of course there wasn't. It's like hot dogs, pretzels, I actually had chicken fingers, which is pretty cool. Uh, but in general, I don't want to be stuck in that situation because it's hard to make a good situation when you're desperate and there isn't much availability. Instead, if you can get ahead of it by being smart, planning snacks, having more protein earlier, it's just such an advantage. And then I used the Top Golf example earlier, actually. So even for that, like I had a really good Chipotle bowl. I personally felt better. It wasn't the food I cared to have. Kyle said he had one of the tacos there, and it was like not to trash yeah. Top Golf or anything, but it was just very simple, very like super salty, it super was greasy. So bad. Like I just I took a bite of it and I was like, nope, I'm so glad with my decision to have the bowl with Josh. Like so yeah, just keep going. Sorry. And that no, absolutely. And that's that's totally where I'm at. Like I know I value and Kyle similar. We like big amounts of food, like big amounts of healthy food. I like feeling full. I like having fuel in me. And I'll just take that all day over a really small super caloric fried greasy sugary thing instead like that's what i value and it's funny because one of our buddies there he was like are you guys gonna have anything else aside from mexican and we're like probably not and like uh the bachelor was cool with it so i wasn't complaining like it was just such a good go-to and especially when you're in these situations where you're traveling where food's expensive you're paying a lot for it like by me having a big chipotle lunch went up to a steakhouse, I just enjoyed that steak, I had some bread, I was totally happy. Whereas normally I need to get like three sides and my bill would have been like $300 or something insane. So this is a good tool where if you plan a little bit ahead, you think about where you're going for food, you really just try to think it through, it's actually a lot easier to stay on track than you think. Um, and I know this is a big barrier for people, but just spending a little bit of time, and you might say, oh, ease up, you're on vacation. This is me easing up because this is me demonstrating myself self-love. We said it before, self-discipline is self-love. And by me thinking ahead, I'm actually prepared. I'm getting the food I need. I'm eating healthy food so I can enjoy my vacation. And it's not like I'm sitting here doing calculations for three hours. If you're using that as a barrier, you're lying to yourself and you're not putting in that effort you need. It takes me two, three minutes to think ahead. And because of that, it actually frees me from being in those panic situations where I've had no food, I have to eat something horrible, I don't like it, I'm overpaying for it. So this is like my biggest tip and this has changed traveling for me. And when you find a good place, don't be ashamed to keep going there. Yeah, and I think like I, I made a post the other day and I had briefly mentioned it in the, the Monday episode, but like, a lot of people seize up during these types of situations like they freeze they're like I have no idea what to order they either order something where it just leaves them super far away from their goals or just feeling like absolute garbage and like you don't want that and we're just trying to inspire you to be able to still live your best like life and honestly it feels so comforting to be able to go into social situations to be able to do whatever it is that you want to but still stay on track and still feel incredible while having a great time and even I said to the bachelor Andrew you know shout out to him he was we're trying to inspire him to just 
get ready and just feel his absolute best. And I said to him, like trying to explain it, Hey, I'm actually not really hungry right now. It was like before the flight, it was like Sunday morning and I got like an egg white sandwich, um, you know, with some spinach and like, it was incredible, but I was trying to explain why I was like eating like that and trying to get that food in beforehand. Cause I knew we'd be going to the airport. You have no idea what's going on. There's so many unknowns. So I'm like, if I just get this in me, a couple hundred calories, some good protein, it's going to set me up for success. And like just spending those 30 seconds to that minute, just thinking of like what's the rest of the day is going to hold and how you can set yourself up for success while having a great time. There's no better feeling. And that kind of brings me into number five, which is just going out of your way for a better option. Like between driving to Florida and spending two months there for us, you know, going to Dubai last year. And like, we've been very fortunate to be able to navigate and travel and, you know, meet some cool people and just do some great things. But obviously sometimes you have to go out of, out of your way for, for some different foods. Right. And once again, evaluating what it is that you want. And even for us going, for a nice 10 minute walk and going to the Chipotle, whether it's Chick-fil-A or, you know, finding that thing that is going to lead to better stuff. I find a lot of times people just grab like what's there. Like you're in a hotel, you're like, oh, well, I'm not leaving. Let me call in some room service or whatever it is. Like spend that extra few minutes. You can look on the app. Like there's so many amazing resources, Google Maps. You can look at the Uber Eats to find what's close like and make that better option. But I'd say definitely going out of your way will do some great, great things for you. And it's something I firmly believe in. Even for us, like we located that uh, Chipotle, it took us like 20 minutes to get there because we weren't walking right and it was insanely hot and we were going down the wrong stairs, this and that. But once we found it, it was actually only a six minute walk and I think we went there every day. That's just how me and Kyle are and I know a lot of people may not want to do that. That's fine too, like find an area where there's a few different options. Like even the area we found, there was like four different really good healthy options. And even at the airport, when we were going home, we were hungry, we knew we needed lunch. And I'm like, let's just walk this hangar and we're getting activity doing that. And we're gonna be really sure of the option we want. We did our walk, we ended up at the other side of the hangar. We're like, okay, back there was this really cool sub place. It's worth the 10 minute walk, let's do it boys. And we did it and it was so worth it because in those moments, you just gotta be bigger than that little bit of weakness because you'll feel more full, it's probably cheaper, it's better for you. Like, And when you're vacationing, there's so many variables. I think for me, I would like to feel the best I physically can when I travel. And the best way for me to do that is to eat the best I can, to sleep and rest. And I find that's just a great segue into number six, which is, be aware you can always have a great time. So often traveling, vacation, there's just this flick that goes off. It's like, this doesn't count for anything. I can spend infinite money, I can eat infinite food, I can have horrible decisions, I'll deal with it later. But people become so miserable when they do this cycle. I think it's what you think you want. It's like a kid who wants to just eat sugar. Like you just wanna keep consuming and you do it and you do it and you do it. We've probably been there as kids. And then you have a crazy stomach ache. Like you do need to pay for decisions. If you spend a ton of money, you're gonna be broke. If you eat a ton of food, you're gonna gain a lot of weight and feel horrible or sick or tired. If you're depriving yourself of sleep, that's gonna catch up with you. And there's a push and pull in every direction. There's moments where you can have a lot of sugar and not go past that point where you break. So you need to understand that it's all push and pull. And there will be times where it maybe it's like a horrible night, but you know the rest of vacation will be a little bit better, or it's something you want to do that night, or it'll be a day where you eat a little bit more, or you drink a little bit more, or your sleep sucks, but that's okay. That's part of the process. And when you look at it as a whole and you aim to make these good decisions, especially the small ones that can connect the dots, like our one of our friends was trying to give us crap for having uh, the sugar-free Red Bull or the diet lemonade at Chick-fil-A. But to me, like these are just, I don't care and I actually prefer that. And for me, I'm saving a couple of hundred calories and it gives me more liberty and availability to enjoy those moments where maybe I wasn't as perfect. So when you can win those small wars, you can kind of balance it out and you shouldn't just think it needs to be one side or the other where you're fully locked in or you're absolutely off the deep end just making crazy decisions. Yeah, and like, just truthfully, it's, it couldn't be like the one thing I wanted to, that was like really inspiring that kind of wanted me to talk about some of this stuff for the episode was I saw a guy, uh, Ryan fish. He's got a great Instagram fitness guy and he was ordering something on vacation and he was asking, is it, is it crispy or is it grilled or something like that? And a lot of people in the comments were just like going off like, man, chill out, like have fun. Like it's vacation. And like he had filmed another video saying like, he was just, first of all, trying to inspire people, but like, that's just, it's just a normal question. And I think it's 
kids very often. And I'd say for the most part, none of you here are like that because you are looking to be better. You're looking to be fitter, healthier, happier, inspire those around you. Just feel your absolute best. So like, but there will be always those other people who have those remarks, who make those comments. But like the thing that a lot of people don't realize is like you can still have so much fun. Like you can, instead of having 10 drinks, let's say, say yes to one or two vodka sodas and like still have such an incredible time. You don't have to just self-sabotage yourself. And especially if you are looking to do this stuff for the long run and be able to make it work, like it's just so much more freeing, like I said. So I really wanted to stress that part of things. But And even one more thing to add, great example is like try experimenting in different ways if you're someone who's always gone hard try to have that balance so a good example is we've had the opportunity to travel with our buddy andrew a few times now and at first kyle went on a trip with just him and he was living it up we call him appetizer andrew he loves to get apps for everyone he's an awesome guy and he loves good restaurants good dining it's his favorite thing and that's totally fine. But even what's interesting is we've rubbed off on him so much lately near the end. Even he's like, I just want some healthy, good, cheap, nice food. And he started saying it and he started coming to Chipotle with us. He used to hate that we'd go to Chipotle, but it's been awesome even for him to see that. And then even to realize you can enjoy the dinner, you can get a really good meal in you, you can feel awesome. And it makes you enjoy those dinners more because I've done it that way too. And so is Kyle, where it's always the most grandiose, exciting, expensive, extravagant thing, but it wears on you. You start to feel horrible. Like I remember I had one vacation where I just overate too much. I wasn't feeling good. I just felt horrible the whole trip. I felt like I was spending so much money and you almost become miserable of it. And a lot of people, when they eat out so much, they get home, they go, I just want home cooked meals. Even me, like being away a few days, I appreciate my home cooked meals and I had no desire to go out to eat anything. And that's why if you can kind of balance that and you can have those moments where you have that similar healthier thing, it'll make those highs even higher. Whereas if you're constantly at that level, it can make it hard to stay at that level of enjoyment. So that was an incredible tip there. Yeah, like I'm thinking back to two specific trips in the past. One of them was that one Josh was referencing where like no rules applied, like stuff like that. But you you don't have fun. You just feel horrible. And like it's so nice to be able to enjoy your time and, you know, kind of just still stay on track but just like have ultimate energy no matter what and come back and feel incredible and uh yeah so that was a great point i'm glad josh brought that up but definitely like every one of these tips i firmly believe in like i live to it i swear by them and it's so powerful and number seven is just like finding different ways to get movement in like whatever that is like Josh said, we got some good workouts in. The first one was like pretty good, but not like our, we're not breaking records. The second one was incredible and we just, we felt awesome. We were there for like maybe 70 minutes or something and it was incredible. But even just, we had rules in Dubai when we went there. We're like, hey, so let's, you know, if it's under 20 minutes or maybe 30 minutes, we're, we'll walk, you know? And just like, we'd have these specific things in place where it's like you find ways to get movement in versus like always taking an Uber versus always just sitting there by the pool. Like we'd always integrate that. That's just what feels natural for us is getting some walks in you know getting some movement in lifting some weights like doing something but i'd say for you just finding different ways like you end up feeling better like a lot of times people think they feel better from like sitting there at all times but i genuinely believe when you get movement in when you walk around when you you know get some extra steps and some you know release some endorphins you'll feel so much better to enjoy the rest of the night to you know come back and once again still be on track so if you can't tell we're super passionate about this especially because it's on the top of our head but hopefully every one of these tips helps you in some way or another yeah and if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with us so you can see results in any situation learn how to make fitness a part of your life not an addition to it or a phase you can only do for a bit but to learn how to be fitter healthier and happier for the rest of your life check out our online coaching it'll be the first link in the description up above you can go ahead and apply there or you can go ahead and just look it through learn more uh, and it's just a great opportunity to see what we do how we personalize nutrition training as well as accountability on monday we are doing a special promotion so if you want to wait out till then that will be a fantastic time to get an opportunity to get in a crazy deal a really special opportunity to launch into it so make sure you tune into that episode but go ahead check it out if you want to apply early you can go ahead and just apply there and say i'm applying early for the monday promo and then we can kind of bank that and you'll be good to go but we really hope this helped you these are amazing tips i promise you start experiencing experimenting with these, use them in your schedule and you really narrow down what works absolutely best for you so you can have success even when you travel.